So perfect guys, we already finished up with the physical property environment. We chosen already our setup for the universe. That is our component list and the fluid package list. Okay. Now the next step will be to actually work with the process flow sheet, add all the mastering requirements, hit work, uh, let's say duties requirements if there are, and unit operations for instance. If you're going to be exchanging heat, you're going to mix, if you're going to have a reactor, etc. Now, after that, we will run the simulation, expect there are no errors, and see if there are some results. Okay. Now, this will be the first time we interact with the flow sheet. Remember that the flow sheet is nothing more than a blank site or page that we will be given any kind of set. We will build our system or plant and the process will be set up there. Typically, we must state the zero degrees of freedom, which implies that there is no more variables needed to set up. For instance, a very easy example will be this heat ex exchanger, which has, let's say, water. We state the amount of flow rate, the temperature going in, and the pressure. Now, let's say we do not give the heat duty, and we keep the final temperature. So let's say this initial temperature, let's say the pressure drop is zero, so we state that as well. And the final temperature is given as well. So the HISIS will know by itself that the water will not react on the heater. So water goes in, water goes out. The same material goes in, goes out. So the heater only has one variable to solve. Since we have plenty of data, we have the heat equation, the degrees of freedom is zero. That implies that the Q or heat duty can be calculated. If we give the total composition and temperature initially, if we state there is no dropping pressure, and if we give the final temperature. Now we need to set up all the input data in streams. So let's say we were to add this, even though we add how much heat duty are we giving and how much is the final temperature and the initial temperature? Well, there will be a problem because we haven't stated the streams. That is, we haven't stated the material, the flow rate, etc. So Q will not be able to be calculated. The simulation will not run. The same is true for the unit operation. So if you there is a unit operation which needs a value, let's say the same example, heat exchanger, and we don't have the delta T we want. We add, for instance, the property, all these streams correct and all these streams correct, but the change in temperature is not stated, then heat duty will not be calculated. So guys, let me give you an overview on the simulation environment. Now, this is the ribbons tab. I call it ribbons because they are like menus right here. I cannot say menus because this is also the menu bar. So it's kind of complicated to show you that this is the menu bar as well as these menu bars. So they call these ribbons. These little ribbons, if in further videos I call these menus, it's the same to say menu or ribbon, okay? So ribbon is by definition this right here. It changes from environment to environment. Now the, the navigation pane is nothing more than a window which show you all the important uh, sub menus. For instance, the workbook, all the unit operations, the streams you have already, and more options right here. This is very important. The object palette is like if you are known to paint the software, you need to know that, of course, you need to be working on the flow sheet. So you need to modify the flow sheet. This is the inlet mass as well as outlet. This is the energy streams, and these are all the unit operations. Actually, we got plenty custom, columns, and the most important one, column. We got this little guy right here, which is the zoom. You can either use it by the scroll wheel, or we can click here directly in the zoom slider. Trace window is nothing more than all, as the name implies, all the trace, all the important data that we are doing. If we save, if we copy, if we copy, uh, copy paste it, etc. Status windows is essentially for missing data. For instance, it will tell you that you need to add more data. 
or also if there are any kind of error. For instance, if you this is a heater and you say you are applying a heat and this is T1 and this is T2, well, by definition, T2 must be greater than T1 because it's getting heat loads. So if you add, this is, I don't know, maybe 10 Celsius and this is five Celsius, well, there is an error. It will show you an error. And the environments that we already know that. The flow sheet, as you can see, is this white blank page, but actually this is a tab. So more tabs can open right here and those are not the flow sheets, okay? Just keep in mind that the flow sheet is this one right here. Inside the flow sheet, you can find blocks, which are essentially unit operations, which you find right here. And streams, which are either material streams, which is this product, inlets, or energy. You can add to this drum, maybe energy, Q, etc. Now, What's a ribbon? Essentially, it's any conveniently organized menus. So, for instance, this is the property ribbons and this is the simulation ribbon tabs. So, you don't need to learn them, but just get a little bit comfortable changing between environments. This is the physical environments. You can choose component list, fluid packages. And for the simulation, you will definitely be using the flow sheet tab right here. Okay. These are some overall ways to interact with the flow sheet. For instance, if you click uh, right click in the flow sheet, you can either change a name, change an icon, summary table, hide object, rotate, copy or paste, and delete, etc. Typically, the left click right here is to add more stuff. Well, this is in the background, this is an object. Remember, this will be. It will be the background and it will be the object okay so if you click in this stream or this block those are called objects okay so this is the type of menus you will be getting with the right click okay in order to set the streams you must add if this is a mass stream you must add the raw material all inlet processes intermediate processes and out outlet so let's say we have this process right here it's a pump and then it's get cool so this will be inlet process intermediate and outlet process if you are adding duties that will be this will be inlet of work and this will be outlet of heat load okay and well of course you can state either by units by power etc now, when stating unit operations, recall that a unit operation implies a change on condition. Uh, We're not going to see that much in unit operations. That will be seen more in the next section, which is called unit operations. We're going to see detailed unit operations. But in the meantime, let's analyze the mixer and the heater. We're going to be working on this exercise, includes a mixer and a heater. Please pay attention on how to state the simulation environment once we have, of course, the property environment filled up. 